right, today we are doing chapter one, section three in algebra one. Our essential equation is how can you solve an equation that has variables on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and start with our core concept. Make that a little bigger so it's a little easier to see. Um, again, this is a video, so I'm going to be going through some of these pretty quickly, but you have the capability to stop and pause anytime you need to. To solve an equation with variables on both sides, you're going to simplify one or both sides of the equation. Then you're going to use those inverse operations to collect the variables on one side, collect the constants on the other side, and then get that variable by itself. So we've got our example. And again, if you need to, draw that line to show that you have two sides of that equal sign. Um, you've got that left-hand side and the right-hand side. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So there's nothing to simplify on the left-hand side, nothing to simplify on the right-hand side. So we need to get those variables to one side of that equal sign. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to add 4x to both sides. That's a minus 4x, and the opposite of minus 4 is plus 4. So add 4x to both sides. I'm going to get 10 equals negative 5x. And if you notice, now our variables are on one side. Our constants or our numbers are on the other side. So I'm going to divide by negative 5, and I get negative 2 equals x. So our solution is x equals negative 2. And like always, I want to go back and I want to check that answer. So take out your, write the original problem down, take out that x, put in negative 2. You're going to end up getting 10 plus 8 which is 18, negative 9 times negative 2, which is 18. Both sides of that equal sign equal each other. Let's do one that's got the distributive property. What I like about this one is it's got the distributive property two times. So you're going to take that 3 and you're going to multiply it by the 3x and the 4. Same thing with that 1 fourth. Multiply it by the 32 and the 56. When you do that, you're going to get 9x minus 12 equals 8x plus 14. Now, once we've used that distributive property, we need to get those x's on the same side of the equal sign. And there's actually two ways to do this. You can subtract 9x from both sides, or you can subtract 8x from both sides. I personally like dealing with positives, so I'm going to subtract 8x so I don't have to deal with any negatives. Oops. Or we could go ahead and add 12. Now subtract your 8x. And you're going to get x equals 26. Again, you can go ahead and add, subtract that 8x first and then add 12. In this case, they added the 12 first. And that way is perfectly fine. Solution is 26. All right, take a second and pause. Try these three on your own. When you are ready, click the pause button again and check your answers. All right, if you were having trouble with those, come into IPASS, come into Math Lab, come in after school. Let's talk about special solutions. Equations do not always have one solution. An equation that is true for all values of the variable is an identity. It has infinitely many solutions. An equation is not true for any value it has no solutions. Let's see what I mean by that. On that first one, I've got 3 times quantity 5x plus 2 equals 15. 
first thing I would do, use that distributive property, subtract 15x from both sides, and I get 6 equals 0. That's never going to be a true statement. So that has no solution. Next one, negative 2 times quantity 4y plus 1 equals negative 8y minus 2. Use that distributive property. Add 8y to both sides, and I get negative 2 equals negative 2. That is 100% true. That's never going to change. So that one has infinitely many solutions. So what it comes down to, a false statement, no solution. A true statement, infinitely many. Take a second and pause. When you are have worked these four out, hit pause again and see how you did. All right, so this kind of sums it up. I'm not going to read through each one of these, but what I would do is pause the computer, make sure you know these steps, that you can do these steps without any prompting, that they come automatically to you. If you need to, write them down and study them. This is going to be one of the most important things that you need to know. All right, let's do a word problem. A boat leaves New Orleans and travels on the Mississippi River for four hours. The return trip takes only 2.8 hours because the boat travels three miles per hour faster downstream due to the current. How far does the boat travel upstream? So first thing we always want to do, understand that problem. You're given the amounts of time the boat travels, different speeds, and you're asked to find that distance. So we want to make a plan. We want to use that distance formula. Rate times time equals distance, or distance equals rate times time. To write an expression that represents the problem, because the distance the boat travels in both directions is the same, you can use expressions to write an equation. Oops. So we're going to use that formula, distance equals rate times time. Distance upstream equals the distance downstream, because those two distances are going to be the same. We're going to let x be the speed that it's traveling upstream. So x, time, x miles per hour times 4 equals x plus 3 miles per hour times 2.8. That x plus 3 is because it was, go back to that original problem, 3 miles an hour faster. And it took 2.8 hours. Here it took 4 hours. So we're going to end up with 4x equals 2.8 times quantity x plus 3. Distribute. Subtract 2.8x. And you're going to get 1.2 equals 8.4x. Divide by 1.2. x equals 7. So the boat travels 7 miles per hour upstream. To determine how the far the boat travels, multiply by 7, or multiply 7 miles times 4, and you're going to get 28 miles. Want to look back and make sure that that seems reasonable. 7 plus 3 equals 10. When you substitute that into the distance formula, you get the same distance for upstream and downstream. Okay, 
So you might want to go back through and look at this problem a second time. But this is how you would approach it. Try doing this one on your own. Take a second and pause. When you think you have the answer, let's click on it and see how you did. The answer is 17.5 miles. All right. So that was solving equations with um, variables on both sides of the equation. Again, if you're having trouble, come into Math Lab or IPASS.